to a Jennifer Lopez video somewhere. Everybody says you've got it and you want to sell it on the internet. Have you seen it? Have I seen it? <laughs> I don't know if I'm smiling like I've seen it. <laughs> she was crying a lot. She was a mess. Probably what was going through her mind is her career flashing before her eyes. The A-list celebrity everything in her mind has hired a lawyer to deal with statements she made to police two decades ago. Jennifer Lopez is back in the headlines, and this time it's not for her music or movies. Could J-Lo's involvement in Diddy's 1999 nightclub shooting finally be catching up with her? Obviously, nobody really wants to be arrested <laughs> or handcuffed or, you know, go through all that kind of stuff. It's a really traumatic experience. Ben Affleck's recent comments and FBI investigations are painting a dark picture that could bring an end to her career and possibly more. There's a video floating around, a tape floating around. I wouldn't put it out. Have you seen it? Have I seen it? <laughs> I don't know if I'm smiling like I've seen it. <laughs> what if Jennifer Lopez has been covering up her involvement all along? Was this the reason for her breakup with Ben Affleck? What does Ben know that we don't? You look in the ocean. You see Ben Affleck, <laughs> and you see Diddy. <laughs> the whispers are growing louder, and questions are mounting. What are these secrets about J-Lo's past with Diddy? Did Ben stumble upon something so disturbing that it shook the very foundation of their relationship? Or is it just another Hollywood rumor blown out of proportion? Did Jennifer Lopez witness something during those tumultuous times with Diddy, something that she never spoke about? A-list celebrity everything in her mind has hired a lawyer to deal with statements she made to police two decades ago. Could this revelation be linked to any criminal activities or scandals involving Diddy? Let's find out. The entertainment world is buzzing with rumors that Ben Affleck has come into possession of tapes that the FBI collected during their raids on Diddy. These tapes allegedly feature his wife, Jennifer Lopez, in some compromising or at the very least highly sensitive situations. You see, Suge Knight has revealed his theory for the cause of the rumors swirling that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are getting a divorce, and it centers around disgraced bad boy music executive Diddy. In a recent episode of his podcast, Collect Calls with Suge Knight, the former Death Row CEO made a series of explosive claims suggesting a bizarre connection between the FBI, Jennifer Lopez, and her estranged husband, Ben Affleck. Knight alleged that the FBI handed over tapes incriminating Lopez that were recovered from raids on Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles to Affleck. Is there a Jennifer Lopez video somewhere? Everybody says you've got it and you want to sell it on the internet. Have you seen it? Have I seen it? <laughs> I don't know if I'm smiling like I've seen it. <laughs> Knight says the content on the tapes is potentially causing a rift in Affleck's marriage with Lopez. They go raid Puffy's house and they get all these videos of J-Lo doing this and J-Lo doing that. Knight started off. Knight rehashed the infamous nightclub shooting incident in 1999 that involved Lopez and Diddy, using it as a reference point to illustrate the erosion of J-Lo's credibility. And they know the fact that J-Lo lied and said that the gun was Shine's or whatever and sent that man to prison, destroyed his life, and she knew it was Puffy's, he said. He further insinuated that the FBI decided to notify Affleck about the discovery of the alleged tapes due to the potential impact they could cause should they go public, much like the fallout from Diddy's 2016 hotel escape on his ex-girlfriend Cassie. In any case, a source told Daily Mail that Lopez feels disturbed by the current allegations against Sean P. Diddy Combs. Not that people forget, but her relationship with him several years ago had its tumultuous ups and downs, the source said. What he has done and what he has been accused of is heartbreaking. It is disgusting for her to see that someone, who at one point in her life was someone she put so much trust in, has ended up turning into a very damaged human being. It is disturbing to see. You see, Jennifer Lopez and Sean P. Diddy Combs have a history. They met on the set of her music video for If You Had My Love in 1999, before splitting in 2001 amid rumors Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, had been unfaithful. Something Lopez later confirmed. The pair were arrested soon after they started dating following a shooting at a Times Square nightclub in December 1999 that left three people injured. Lopez was released from custody without being charged after 14 hours in jail, while Diddy later walked free after a seven-week trial, which saw his protege Jamal Shine Barrow, long suspected to be the fall guy, convicted and sentenced to 10 years.
In a candid interview with British LA in July 2000, Lopez opened up about a harrowing experience that shook her world, describing it as a complete nightmare. Obviously, nobody really wants to be arrested <laughs> or handcuffed or, you know, go through all that kind of stuff. It's a really traumatic experience. The aftermath of the shooting incident was not confined to emotional scars alone. Legal battles ensued, amplifying the complexities of an already distressing situation. Notably, in 2008, a staggering lawsuit amounting to $130 million was filed against Combs by one of the victims, seeking reparation for the damages incurred during the incident. Eventually, in 2011, Combs reached a settlement with all three individuals, including the victim, the terms of which were kept confidential. The call to reopen the case comes as Combs faces mounting legal trouble. Earlier last month, Homeland Security agents swarmed Combs homes in Los Angeles and Miami in raids that law enforcement sources told The Post were prompted by ST allegations. Recent federal raids on Combs' residences in Los Angeles and Miami have thrust him into a whirlwind of legal turmoil. You're looking at live pictures from the home of Sean Combs, also known as Diddy. HSI is on the scene right now. We also do have video from his home in Los Angeles. HSI Los Angeles is on scene there. Despite his attorney, Aaron Dyer, characterizing the raids as an excessive display of force by authorities, Combs has maintained his cooperation with the ongoing investigation. Federal officials citing an ongoing investigation have yet to disclose the precise rationale behind the searches, leaving many questions unanswered. The federal agents stormed into Diddy's homes one month after Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed an explosive lawsuit claiming the music mogul repeatedly essayed him from September 2022 to November 2023, while Jones was a producer and videographer for The Billionaire. Jones compared Combs to Jeffrey Epstein and accused the mogul of groping his grooming him into having S and forcing him to procure S workers and drugs. Jones alleged in his suit that Diddy was violent, threatened to, to eat his face, brandished guns, and most pointedly was often bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine. The shooting stemmed from an argument between Diddy and a Brooklyn thug named Matthew Allen, who was nicknamed Scar. But Diddy, his bodyguard Anthony Jones and Shine Barrow, endured a seven-week trial in February and March 2001, which ended with Diddy and Jones walking free and Barrow, then 21, being convicted on and gun possession sentenced to 10 years in prison. Mystery still surrounds the Club New York shooting, especially for former Detective Parker, who left the so-called hip-hop cop squad at the NYPD and is now a private investigator. In any case, Diddy has been dogged for years by rumors that he made Shine, now known as Moses Michael Levi Barrow, and who is the opposition leader of the House of Representatives in Belize, take the fall for the incident. The story was that Puff was flossing, which is what they call someone on the streets who's throwing money around and acting like a big shot, Parker said. Scar felt disrespected because he felt he was as important as Puff, and words were exchanged, and then bullets started flying. Shots were fired, and Lopez and Diddy fled the club after the shooting in a Lincoln Navigator. Diddy's driver, Wardle Fenderson, later said that he blew past several red lights as they careened down 43rd Street and onto 8th Avenue, weaving past two police cars. Shine busted off. Shine busted off in the air, Fenderson quoted Lopez as saying, before cops pulled them over. Former NYPD D to Derek Parker told The Post how in the precinct, her mother was yelling at J. Lowe in Spanish and she was really mad at Jennifer. I heard her say, I told you not to get involved with him. The night of the shooting, that was kind of the beginning of the end of their relationship because it then became dangerous for her career to be involved with him. Lopez was released from custody without being charged after 14 hours in jail. Natanya Rubin, who was one of the three victims in the club shooting, has long insisted that Combs shot her in the face. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I've had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything. Natanya Rubin, who was hit by a bullet at Club New York when the fight broke out between Diddy's entourage and a thug named Scar, claims that it was Diddy who shot her in the face. 
He denies it. However, Jones, in his lawsuit, claims that Diddy openly bragged about committing the shooting and bribing witnesses and jurors to secure his acquittal. Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York, Jones alleged. He also alleges that Diddy bragged about using Lopez to smuggle the gun into the club. He shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, aka J. Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. Jones alleges. Diddy was backed by Glenn Beck, who was working security at the club that night, and is now a martial arts expert who works with Deadly Art of Survival magazine. Beck testified at the 2001 trial but told The Post that it appeared the prosecution was hell-bent on nailing Diddy and therefore did not ask him about Barrow, aka Shine. He called Jones' claims bullish and said, We knew Scar, we knew Shine. He was a wild kid from Brooklyn. Now, it looks like Lopez may get a call from Combs' lawyers. An expert told In Touch Weekly that Lopez may possess first-hand knowledge due to the New York City nightclub shooting that she and Combs were a part of in 1999. Jennifer Lopez's presence the night of the shooting incident and then departing in the same vehicle as Combs makes her a witness with first-hand knowledge and could subject her to being subpoenaed to testify under oath. New York lawyer Pete Gleason said, if there are any criminal charges or civil claims not outside the statute of limitations, this would likely prove problematic for Lopez. Lopez spoke about past abusive relationships in her 2024 documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told. It is unclear which ex she was referring to. There were people in my life who said I love you and then didn't do things that were kind of in line with the word love. Being thrown around and manhandled like that is not fun, Lopez shared in the Amazon Prime doc which hit the streaming platform in February 2024. She added, I mean, I was never in a relationship where I got beat up, thank God, but I've definitely been manhandled and a couple of other unsavory things. Rough. Disrespectful. Meanwhile, during a recent interview with Channel 5 Believe, Shine, the rapper-turned-politician took some time to address the infamous shooting involving the Bad Boy Records boss. It opens wounds when you hear, you know, the victim saying that, you know, it was Diddy that shot her, Shine told Channel 5. And that was triggered by a lawsuit from a producer, Lil Rod, that produced on the Love album who is making accusations. And in those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. Shine, now the leader of Belize's United Democratic Party, says he's moved on from his conviction and deportation, but is relieved that more people are finally speaking the truth. He shared that everyone knew he was the fall guy for the NYC shooting years ago. Despite being painted as a criminal by his political enemies, Shine insists he was just a young person who took the blame while maintaining his innocence. He explained that while he never went into specifics, the victim has now spoken out about who was responsible. Though there was no forensic testing, witnesses and the victim are clearing his name. Shine has moved on and appreciates any help Diddy has given to Belize. He wishes Diddy well and hopes justice is served, whatever the truth may be. In a 2022 interview on Drink Champs, Shine reflected on his past with Diddy, saying he no longer blames him as much as he once did. He believes Diddy's lawyers were more responsible for the outcome, as they were focused on securing a not guilty verdict for Diddy. Over time, Shine forgave him, recognizing the pressures they were both under at the time. <clears throat> but in retrospect, <clears throat> you know, I blame it more on the lawyers mm. that were advising him to separate the case than him. Mm. Because his lawyers were there, excuse me, to secure a not guilty verdict by any means. In any case, the accusations against Diddy have become more serious. And while J-Lo has never been directly implicated, her close association with Diddy during that time has raised questions. Could it be that Ben confronted J-Lo about her past, leading to their separation? In fact, according to one blind item, J-Lo was actually Diddy's weapon carrier. The blind item states, everyone knew she was lying when she testified back then. The part that is going to come back and bite her is that she actually carried the gun into the club for Diddy because they didn't check the women's bags like they pat down the men at the club. The woman who was shot in the face says she clearly saw J-Lo reach into her bag and hand the gun to Diddy for him to use. That is some major concealed carry of what is mostly like an unregistered, unlicensed gun that was used in shooting. 
Anyway, following this, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, or Benifer as they were famously dubbed, became Hollywood's golden couple. Affleck and JLo's romance first ignited on the set of the romantic comedy Giggly. While the movie itself didn't fare well critically or commercially, the chemistry between its two stars was undeniable. Their relationship quickly became a hot topic in the media, with paparazzi capturing their every move and fans eager to learn more about Hollywood's newest power couple. By November 2002, Affleck had proposed to Lopez with a stunning 6.1 carat pink diamond ring from Harry Winston, reportedly worth $2.5 million. Their engagement was highly publicized and the couple seemed blissfully happy. However, the intense media scrutiny put significant pressure on their relationship. The constant attention and rumors about their personal lives began to take a toll. In 2003, just days before their planned September wedding, Benifer decided to postpone the ceremony, citing excessive media attention. Despite their efforts to make it work, the strain proved too much. In early 2004, they announced their breakup, marking the end of their first chapter together. After their split, both Affleck and Lopez moved on with their lives, each finding love with other partners. In June 2004, Lopez married singer Mark Anthony. The couple welcomed twins, Emmy and Max, in 2008. They remained together until their separation in 2011 and finalized their divorce in 2014. Affleck, meanwhile, married actress Jennifer Garner in June 2005. The couple had three children, Violet, Serafina, and Samuel. Despite their seemingly strong marriage, Affleck and Garner separated in 2015, finalizing their divorce in 2018. During their time apart, both Affleck and Lopez faced personal challenges and grew through their experiences. In April 2021, Lopez ended her engagement to former MLB star Alex Rodriguez. Just a month later, rumors began swirling about a possible rekindling of her romance with Affleck. Speculation turned into reality when the pair were spotted together multiple times, often looking cozy and affectionate. By the summer of 2021, Benefer 2.0 was in full swing. The couple wasted no time in planning their wedding, eager to make their long-awaited union official. In a private ceremony in July 2022, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez exchanged vows, finally becoming husband and wife. The wedding was an intimate affair, attended by close family and friends. This time, the couple managed to keep the media frenzy at bay, focusing on their love and commitment to each other. Their love story had all the makings of a fairy tale, rekindling a romance after years apart, getting married in a Las Vegas chapel, and then celebrating with a grand ceremony in Georgia. But behind closed doors, things were far from perfect. The cracks began to show early on. Rumors of tension and disagreements plagued their marriage, but they tried to keep up appearances. However, those who were close to the couple knew that things were deteriorating fast. Sources close to J.Lo revealed that the couple was barely speaking to each other in the months leading up to the separation. On May 15th, a source exclusively revealed to In Touch that Ben and Jennifer were headed for divorce after he moved his belongings out of their shared home. The writing is on the wall. It's over. They're headed for a divorce, and for once, Ben's not to blame, the insider said. He's focusing on his work and his kids now. Ben already moved out, and they'll likely have to sell the dream house they spent two years searching for. They'll never stop loving each other, but she can't control him, and he can't change her. There's no way it could have lasted. The source continued. They waited almost two decades to get back together, but in the end, they just couldn't make it work. They both said they'd matured and learned from their mistakes, but some of the bigger issues that tore them apart the first time remained the same. How do you like them apples? <laughs> There's not enough liquor in the world for you to get me to say something about that. All in all, the public saw this divorce coming, but what really shocked everyone was the fact that there was no prenup in place. In Hollywood, where relationships are under the spotlight and money flows like water, skipping a prenup is almost unheard of, especially for two stars as wealthy and successful as Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. We're talking about millions of dollars here. How could they not think of protecting their fortunes? But maybe, just maybe, this was less about the money and more about the fairy tale they believed they were living. Ben and Jen had history, a wild, passionate, and very public love story that spanned two decades. When they found their way back to each other after all those years, it was like something out of a movie. Perhaps, in the heat of rekindled love, the idea of a prenup felt, well, unromantic. Who wants to talk about splitting assets when you're caught up in the idea of forever? 
There's also the chance that one of them, maybe both, didn't want to rock the boat with a prenup. Let's be real, bringing up the idea of a prenup can kill the vibe pretty fast. It's like saying, hey, just in case we don't work out, let's talk about how we'll divide the money. For a couple who had already been through so much drama and heartbreak, the thought of planning for a potential split might have felt like a jinx. Or maybe they were just too head over heels in love to even consider it. Their Vegas wedding was spontaneous and intimate, a far cry from the typical Hollywood spectacle. Maybe that same spontaneity and passion led them to skip the legal talk altogether, believing that this time they were in it for the long haul. But now, with the divorce papers filed and no prenup in sight, the lack of that legal safety net is making things a lot messier. Instead of a clean break, they're left to figure out who gets what from the millions they've earned together. And it's not going to be pretty. What started as a romantic gesture now looks like a major oversight, adding even more drama to an already headline-grabbing split. It's a classic case of love versus practicality, and in the end, it seems like love might have lost this round. In any case, when J.Lo filed for divorce, she made sure to keep things straightforward. There were no demands for spousal support, no mentions of custody battles, as the couple did not have children together. But the lack of a prenup means that everything the couple earned during their nearly two years of marriage is up for grabs. This includes Ben's recent successes with movies like Air and Hypnotic, and JLo's own ventures such as Shotgun Wedding and The Mother. But what's truly shocking is the timing of this filing. August 20th marks the second anniversary of their lavish Georgia wedding. Filing on this day seems symbolic, almost as if JLo wanted to send a clear message to the world. But what that message is remains a mystery. The divorce filing might have been straightforward, but the aftermath is anything but. Reports suggest that the couple has been trying to hash out a financial settlement for months, but the negotiations have become increasingly bitter. The sale of their marital home in Beverly Hills, Ben's purchase of a new house in Brentwood, and J Lo's search for a new place all point to a relationship that has been over for a long time. So why did JLo decide to file now when they're still in the middle of these negotiations? Some speculate that it's a PR move. Filing first could give her the upper hand in the court of public opinion. Others believe that something happened behind the scenes, something so significant that JLo felt she couldn't wait any longer. And then there's the question of Diddy. Could it be that the renewed attention on Diddy's past and JLo's connection to it pushed her to end things with Ben? Was there an ultimatum? A confrontation? The truth may never come out, but the timing of it all is too coincidental to ignore. As the world watches this divorce unfold, one thing is clear. This is just the beginning. The lack of a prenup, the ongoing financial battles, and the shadow of Diddy's past all suggest that this divorce could get a lot messier before it's over. And with both Ben and J.Lo being such high-profile figures, the media frenzy is unlikely to die down anytime soon. So, what's next for Benifer? Will they be able to move on peacefully, or will this divorce turn into one of the biggest celebrity scandals of the decade? And what role, if any, did Diddy play in their downfall? These are the questions that everyone is asking, and as more details emerge, the answers might be more shocking than anyone could have imagined. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.